Hello everybody from a sunny Munich from on-site the International Congress Center in Munich where the 25th International AIDS Conference is taking place. And I'm very honored and privileged to have with us today Annabel Manding. And I searched up the meaning of Annabel and it means gracious and beautiful. That is what I found on the <laughs> internet. And she is. And Annabel is a seasoned presenter of TV shows and has acted in national and international films and television productions. But despite being surrounded by a glamorous world, she remains a very down-to-earth and human person at heart. She has been a member of the Board of Trustees of the Berliner Atschrift, that is Berlin AIDS Help, for over 20 years. And, she ha and has hosted the gala Artists Against AIDS a few times in Berlin, did so last year at the 20th anniversary of the gala. In fact, she is also co-hosting today's opening ceremony of the 25th International AIDS Conference, but still she graciously allowed CNS to steal some time <laughs> from her for an interview before rushing off to the green room. We are truly touched by her humility, which is so rare to come by in a person of her stature. Annabel, truly humbled. What made you feel so concerned about HIV and AIDS? First of all, thank you so much for the lovely and very touching introduction. I feel honored. I want to tell everyone out there that I do feel honored being here. Thank you so much. Um, actually, the subject about HIV and AIDS is uh, personal because a friend of mine suffered from it um, over 20 years ago and died. And um, during that course, the Berlin AIDS Help had asked me to host a charity event. It was a very small event. It was at the time when the AIDS help was still small. It grew. It is the second biggest AIDS help in Germany besides the German AIDS help. Mm -hmm. And so from there, I was always um, there for them because I realized that their work is very close to the people and they're very engaged and, and lovely people also, the whole team of the Berlin AIDS help. So when they asked me to host the first um, gala um, against AIDS, Artist Against AIDS gala, I said yes, of course, I was very honored. And then they asked me to become a member of the Board of Trustees. And ever since I've been there, um, I, I love what they do and I try to support them. And that's why I'm engaged and that's why I'm also interested. My husband is a doctor. So um, it's like everything that has to do that can be solved through science and through um, intelligence, um, I, I'd like to support. Uh, in your own words, HIV is one of the most explosive socio-political uh, issues quote unquote, mm -hmm. why so? Well, HIV and AIDS is um, something that reflects actually the social status of and political status of people. And I think um, when we hopefully um, succeed to fight AIDS and HIV, it automatically parallelly means that a stigmata and suppression will also be solved in a certain way. So I think it's crucial that we um, understand the overall picture. And HIV and AIDS is unfortunately a signal for disbalance and for the fact that not all people have the same rights. So, uh, Annabel, what are some of the ups and downs you might have seen in this fight against HIV AIDS in your long association uh, with uh, creating awareness and uh, trying to con uh, try fighting against it? Yes, I mean, the thing is that actually we've, we were on a good path, I think, for the um, fast track cities to fight HIV, but Corona was actually, um, the pandemic put us, put people in a situation where they became very distrustful um, concerning science and medicine. And that is something that reflects on the whole process of HIV and AIDS. So we kind of were thrown back. So I think that is a big um, blow against the whole movement, and I hope that we can overcome it by uh, common sense. The theme of this conference is putting people first. So what is your take on that? And why do you think that community involvement is very important if we really want to end AIDS mm -hmm. by 2030? Sure. We're aiming at <laughs> ending HIV and AIDS in 2030, but um, yeah, we need a lot, of, a lot of people to support it. I mean, people first means people are affected by it, not industries. It's, it's, it's a matter of humanity. So if we all stand together and put people first, we automatically will understand 
what the forces are behind HIV and AIDS, how they, how they split societies, how people suffer, how societies also suffer, and people that are transgender, people that are ho um, homosexual and lesbians, all the, the whole community of LGBTQIA plus suffer because of HIV and AIDS because they are not respected in a way that heterosexual people are respected. And that is something that is not human. So putting humanity first, putting people first, will hopefully um, solve that problem and also solve, in the course of it, HIV and AIDS. Uh, we also have with us today Dr. Gilada. He is a governing council member of International AIDS Society. And Anubal, he was the first physician in India to start an HIV clinic. I think it was back in 1986, 85. 85. Wow. Congratulations. Thank you. I didn't know. And, and he has also engaged film stars in India in his quest to control. Super. It. So can you please share some of that experience? See, we being doctors, we are duty bound to care for HIV positive people or any disease in which we are working. But to get a face, to get a honor and dignity for that work, we need uh, people who matters. Uh, people who matter, either they are political leaders or social leaders or film leaders, because they have following. And uh, I remember involving a superstar from India. His name is Sunil Dutt. His son is now a superstar. And Sunil was so much uh, humanitarian person. And for every program, he used to be there. Sometimes we used to feel that we call such a big star, and there are only 20 people. So we, uh, in the corner, we took him and said, it is not a program for your dignity. He said, no, no, no. If we don't convince these 20 people, we cannot convince 2,000 people. So whether they're 10 or 20 or 30, doesn't matter. That kind of people we had. And probably HIV got honor and dignity because of such people, like you people. Uh, Rock Hudson, Magic Johnson, they gave a face to HIV. Uh, in countries like India, we have a VIP syndrome. So unless and until some VIP is down with any disease, that disease doesn't get importance. Mm. But our VIPs will not come forward. Like in America and like in Western countries, it happened. So people lend their name, and that led the moment to a, a next level. Uh, now that we have treatment, medicines available, everything, but at that time, uh, I remember those days where in Africa they used to have a mass funeral. Now we have come over that. And today, India has played a great role because it is very important to make a molecule to treat any disease. But it is more important to make that molecule accessible and available to people and that India has made. At 0.3% of international cost, we are able to provide medicine. So today, millions of people are surviving because of India. Super. I'm impressed. Thank you. Seriously, I didn't know that. I'm, I'm very impressed. Yes, know. yes. We, we are said to be the pharmacy of the world yeah. when it yeah, comes to uh, HIV AIDS and so many other medicines. Yeah, today, whosoever, WHO, UNHCR, they talk about HIV or elimination, they talk on the strength of India. But they feel shy to take name of India. Mm. Today, you global HIV scenario minus India. You imagine where we are. We also have a youth power today. Mm -hmm. And come, please come here. Please, we can share this. No, no, no. He, he can stand. No, no, you no, can no, sit no, you can sit here. Sit here. Sharing a chair with Anna will, is a big honor. <laughs> yes, it is a big honor. What would you like to say about why is it important to engage the youth? And what in your capacity have you been doing? Uh, so we have been working from for a Human Touch Foundation and it's an NGO in Goa in India. So we have the residential camps over there and then uh, we uh, when we are having camp we uh, have a sessions which are uh, uh, always led by the main uh, like uh, doctors, experts from varied fields like doctors or uh, uh, in the, we have many sessions like S SRHR as well as uh, how about uh, HIV information because as we are growing up even SRHR uh, information is very helpful for us and uh, then I would say like uh, we help the children over there. We include the adolescents living with HIV in the residential camp and then we provide them with the information so that they get motivated and we even provide a community support for them because if we are alone, we feel that uh, you know, we are self-demotivated mm -hmm. because we don't have community. If we go to talk to a non-PLHIV, we don't feel that connectivity within them. So we in this residential camp, I feel that uh, most of us, we feel very 
very comfortable with each other we can share our experiences we can share our challenges as well and we can learn from the other peers like how they uh, how they have come forward and how they have uh, had a successful life so that the peers who are feeling demotivated or peers who are feeling self isolated they feel they get motivated to be someone mm -hmm. someone in their life and to achieve some things so yeah we uh, include uh, many alhiv through goa and even out of goa we bring them together over there and we provide them with the knowledge as well as the skills which can through which they can navigate through their difficult times of their life super yes thank you thank you and anabel that gives you all the more reason to visit goa now yes, when yes, next yes. you are in india especially <laughs> <laughs> residential camp which we have maybe yes, yes. <laughs> We also have with us another doctor today who is in this. He's not an HIV doctor, but he is part of this campaign okay. of, sp of spreading and how to control HIV. Kashyap Bandotkar. Hi. So I'm Dr. Kashyap Bandotkar, as I explained. I'm currently a postgraduate in the Department of Oral Medicine and Radiology at God, yeah, at God and <laughs> College. So I've been volunteering with the Human Touch Foundation as. Uh, mentioned by nameshwari for the past almost 2 years now and i've been there as a medical resource person so we've been doing a lot of oral screening camps for people who are living with hiv twice a week i am running an opd at the goa medical college in the art center i'm a dentist mm -hmm. so uh, we've noted that many of the patients who present first present with oral manifestations and as dr must be knowing viral loads or cd4 or even hiv tests are not available in all parts so a provisional diagnosis can sometimes just be made you know by a oral screening so that's where we are doing our research mm -hmm. and that's how we are trying to get in a larger uh, testing base done uh, in the state of goa yeah super yeah. i'm very i think um let me just add something because i'm i'm really impressed because it seems that you're you're getting to the subject of hiv and aids from all different angles and that yeah. is really important and also by including the youth, because that's the new generation, and and we always try that. But actually, in Germany, I think we could learn from you. <laughs> Germany can be very conservative, and uh, actually, and we are also losing the youth due to Corona, because the youth also is suspicious concerning Corona, and so they forget about you know safety and protecting themselves, and also and everything it has to do with those kind of diseases. So, um, thank you for for giving us those insights. Also, the Human Touch uh, Foundation did a lot of work with the government mm -hmm. during the pandemic during the lockdown because ARV treatment cannot be stopped you know that and we had a massive lockdown so we had people from human touch and other NGOs chip in we used to go to homes of people during the lockdown just to give them their medicines so that's the last my effort that human touch has done in the state wow. of goa and it's it's quite it's quite commendable and i think peter borges the president of the organization is here i think he can come and say a few words about that he is the source and the inspiration behind human touch okay thank you so much hello hello <laughs> so uh, human touch completes 15 years this year Mm -hmm. and uh, all the kids uh, have grown up with the organization so at every stage uh, we have done something very innovative and creative uh, curating uh, you know special program adapting to their needs so now our focus is mostly on mental health and as they grow up they want to uh, you know get married plan a family you know livelihood career so these are the emerging issues with our young people so all our programs are basically aligned to those needs. Mm. Yeah, so that's that's uh, and, yeah, and uh, I think the largest uh, delegation from any state, nine of us have come, thanks to UNAIDS and IS for bringing us here. And a uh, few of them are traveling first time. Yeah, so it's a beautiful experience, Exciting. and Germany is beautiful. Yeah, Munich is beautiful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think Munich is beautiful. <laughs> yes. Before we end, your special message for all of us, for the audience, for people worldwide. Well, to everyone out there, I think if we remember what is good for a single person, we will remember what is good for the whole world. So if you approach people um, with dignity and with the way you want to be approached to, then all the matters of um, not giving other people the same rights, not giving people the same respect, is just going to get uh, go away. Because I think if we realize that 
we have to deal with another the way we want to be approached, then the whole world has the chance to heal. All the best to all of you. My name is Anna Bermandeng. It was a great honor to be here, and I can't wait to present the opening session of this year's AIDS conference in Munich. Thank you very much. Thank we are really, truly indebted to you. Thank 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 you.